everybody. Hey, welcome back. Um, today I have a project for you that is aimed at middle school and high school age. Um, it is a little bit of a challenge. I think it's one that you guys can do great on and I think can be a lot of fun. So I get a lot of requests from kids that age about um, how to draw an eye or how to paint an eye. And so um, I thought, let's do it. Let's do that one. So there is some tricks that you can use to make your eyes look a little bit more realistic. And um, I'm going to teach you that. And then also at the same time, I thought it would just be a fun thing to do to teach you a little bit about the color wheel. So we are doing kind of a unique project because it is going to be an eye, but the iris is actually going to be a color wheel. And we're going to talk about why learning about the color wheel is really important and can make a huge difference in how you um, paint and how you color things in. So um, you're going to need some paper. You're going to need a pencil, obviously. A Sharpie marker would really come in handy. And um, you're going to need some kind of a paint. If you don't have paint on you, and you could use acrylic, you can use watercolor. If you don't have any paint at home right now, that's okay. Grab some markers, some crayons, some colored pencils will work wonderful for this and join with me we're going to do it step by step and so feel free to stop anytime turn off the video and just kind of pause it and do the step don't feel rushed by it um, there are some parts that i kind of speed up just for time's sake and feel free to just pause it at any time and take your time on this if you have any questions i'd love to hear from you send me a message um, you can contact me through um, my facebook page which is artwork by julia coolish and I can also would love to not only receive messages from you on there, but I'd love to see some pictures of your final um, drawing and painting that you did on this. So enjoy, you guys. Don't get overwhelmed by it. I hope you learned some things, and I hope it's a little bit of a challenge that you're going to find um, beneficial to you. So thanks, guys. Okay, you guys. So for material today, we're going to need, obviously, a simple piece of paper laying horizontally. You need some kind of a sharp pencil. You'll need some kind of color. Um, you can do the color lots of different ways. You can do it with acrylic paint, which is what I'm gonna use today, and I'll walk through the colors in a moment. But you could certainly use watercolor paint, you can use crayons, colored pencils, or markers. So you have a whole variety of things that you could use for this. Um, for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna paint it in there. It'll make it a little more visible and bright colored on the video so you can see. So as far as colors go, if you're going to paint, there are colors that you absolutely need, and then there are colors that would be nice to have as extras, but you don't need it because we could make them. So the colors you absolutely need is you need a white, you need a black, you need red, yellow, and blue. So five colors that you really can't do without, no matter what you're using. And then in addition to that, I could always make the orange, of course, by combining my red and my yellow, but for simplicity's sake, I've chosen just to go ahead and um, add my orange, add my green. This is a purple right here that I'm going to add. And then I also added a brown so I could get some skin tone in there. Um, you can decide if you want that or not. So these are the basics that you absolutely need. Again, colored pencil, um, crayon will work fine, markers will work great. So let's get started. So to start off, we're going to do one giant eye. We're not trying to do two eyes or anything. So I'm just going to draw my simple iris shape here. Sometimes young people will start off and sometimes I will start off by doing the actual shape of the whole eyeball and then covering it. Um, I think for kids it's nice to just get that iris because it's something that we can really all relate to like we recognize the iris. But we do want to think if we're just drawing in the colored part or the iris part we do also want to think though about the shape of the whole eyeball, because you know the eyeball would come out all around here. So as we're doing that, the first thing we're gonna think about is how the eyelid, the skin over the eyeball, is gonna fit over here. So typically, the lid is gonna just kinda skim over the top of that iris, okay? So I'm gonna loosely, again, when you are, just a friendly reminder, when you're drawing in something with pencil, make sure that you're always kind of drawing light. I'm going a little dark here today so you can see it well on the video, but typically draw a little light because then you can leave your, your pencil marks nice and light and they're easy to erase and you can get several lines in there and then kind of clean it up. Okay, so this is the top of my eyelid skimming on the top of my iris and up here would be kind of where 
the eyeball itself would hit. So this is where the crease of the eye would be. Okay, and we'll erase this here in a minute. But let's go back to the eyelid. So our eyelid is gonna come down and then we have to think, well, where about does the tear duct sit? Cause that's gonna where our eyelid's gonna kind of end up falling. So over here, I'm just gonna draw a little dot here to kind of tell me where I think that eye uh, tear duct is gonna fall. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring, extend my eyelid down till it basically touches some, some point of that tear duct. We'll of course make it bigger later. And then there is typically more of the eyeball showing on this side than there is over here. This kind of tends to go down pretty sharply. And so this is gonna be about the edge where I think where the edge of that um, outer eyelid is gonna be. And then we also not only have an eyelid on top, but we tend to have an eyelid on the bottom that skims it also. And so we're just gonna let that skim the very bottom of my iris, so it's gonna cover up maybe a little. It doesn't always have to skim that. If I wanted to, sometimes for some people, it goes right below it, and that's fine too. You can do it however you would like to. And then we'll have it kind of come up, and I'm not gonna have it exactly touch. We don't want a football looking kind of thing. So we'll just leave this for now, and we won't make those touch at all. Over here, we wanna start thinking about our tear duct. So a tear duct kind of is shaped like this. It's gonna kind of come in and out, and then it's gonna come up, and it's gonna come down. Okay, so that basically is kind of the shape of my eye. Here's my iris. And then just so we can get our bearings, let's go ahead and draw our pupil in. Now, the pupil changes sizes depending on how much light is going in there, but for our purposes here, because we're doing a color wheel, we're gonna have our pupil go right in the middle of our iris, which by the way, many times that eyelid will cover up part of your pupil too. But like I said, we're trying to just do two lessons at once. So we'll right smack in the middle of our whole circle of our iris, go ahead and draw a smaller version of the pupil. We're gonna pretend that it's very dark in this room and, or very light in this room, and then we don't want um, much more light coming in, and so the pupil has gotten very small. Okay, then on the bottom here, up on the top, we're gonna have eyelashes, and of course we'll have some mini eyelashes down here, but there is a little ledge that kind of sits right here, because the eyelashes will come out here, but there's a little ledge and it kind of, you see it off on this side more than you do anything else, even though it goes to the whole thing. So go ahead and draw a little ledge that starts off a little bit wider here, and then the way that it ends up looking, it kind of feels like it meets up here and becomes one. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and erase this up here because I don't need to see the top of my iris any longer. Make sure I can see the side of my iris, that's a little light. Okay, so we have a basic shape of the eye, okay? And again, this is the top of the eyeball. We'll just kind of draw a little bit of it in. It would come around and it would kind of close in a little bit here and then up here, way up there, actually we'll just barely see it, is kind of where our eyebrow would be. Now when I, I'm not gonna sketch in the whole eyebrow, but just do a little indication of some hairs that kind of go, they don't go straight up, they kind of go at an angle back and then down. Again, we, we won't see the whole eyebrow today. We're mostly concentrating on the actual eye. Okay, so we have the shape of the eye now. Let's think for a moment, let's move away from the actual eye and think more about this color wheel that we're, we're building. So some basics of a color wheel. We have our primary colors. Hopefully you're thinking in your mind what those primary colors are. We have red and we have yellow and we have blue. And we can have those three colors and we can make any other color. Like it's amazing, but any other color can be made with those three colors. So what I wanna do here, we have, what we're gonna to make today is a simple um, color wheel. We're gonna do the primary colors, and then we're gonna do the colors that you would mix together to make the secondary colors with. So the first thing I want you to do, you can use a straight edge or you can just eye it. I want you to just draw a straight line going through the pupil horizontally. 
and on each sides of these we're going to have a wedge so we'll have three wedges up here and three wedges here so to get that kind of visually think about how wide those wedges need to be and draw a diagonal line going this way and then flip it over this way a diagonal line going this way okay so we have this funky looking iris that's going to be technically a color wheel so let's think about that i'm grabbing a paintbrush here so on a color wheel we always think of the primary colors first and you can line up a color wheel however you want it we're just going to choose to do yellow up here at the top so i'm going to take the primary color yellow and i'm going to paint it in so if you are using markers, you could go ahead and color it in. Or if you are using crayon or colored pencils, just do as neat as you can. We're gonna outline it with black, but try to get as close as you can. And you know, knowing the color wheel and understanding it, even in the simplest terms, really can make a huge difference in making art of any kind. You understand how colors work it really makes a huge difference okay I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm gonna take a minute and just I'm gonna fill in the rest of those colors here my primary color so I will skip this one and I will do red next to it and the third one so we're gonna have some blanks here And for time's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on time-lapse and fill that in and then I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so now I have this all set up so that my primary colors are on there and I'm ready to do my secondary colors. So again, I could go ahead and mix a yellow and an orange, or excuse me, yellow and a red together and I could get an orange that would be no problem and if you do not have an orange feel free to do that um, my recommendation I will show you just so you know so my recommendation is always to take a little bit of the darker color lay it down in a spot all by itself and then grab a bigger chunk probably of the yellow color because it's a little bit lighter mix it in and always add a little bit more of that yellow until you get the orange that you want so the more red I have, notice I hardly used any red, and look at how much red is affecting that. The darker the color, the more it's gonna affect the, the color in general. So I could go with this orange, which is kind of a reddish orange. The more color I add of one of the primaries, the, 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 the way it's gonna change how that final secondary color turns out. So this one I added a lot more yellow. I wanted to have you see it side by side. And so this is gonna be more of a yellow orange. So you decide how you want it to, to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, use the colors that I have since I had them and just for time's sake, I have an orange, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. And I'm gonna go right between my red and my yellow. So, you know, color wheels are something that kids learn a lot of times in elementary, and they know the basics of it. They can tell you what the primary colors are. They probably can tell you what the secondary colors are and how you can combine colors to get them. But why do we learn the color wheel? That's the big question. And like I said earlier, understanding even the basics of a color wheel is gonna help you so much in creating art because I can take just even the knowledge I have of these two that yellow and red are gonna make an orange and I can determine what colors I want. So there are many times, I don't prefer to do it this way, but I have done it for study sake, where I might start off a painting and I literally just have a red, a yellow, and a blue and a white on my, um, sometimes I'll add a black on my um, palette and I can mix all kinds of different colors. So for example, um, let's say that I want to um, make an orange like this and I want to have several different shades of that orange. Mix up a darker shade here. Because if I want to draw a ball of some kind, a sphere, one side of that orange ball is going to be very, very a light orange, almost a yellow. 
the middle part where the sun is not hitting it quite as much would be a, a darker yellow. And then the, the other side where it gets really shadowy would have a lot more of red in it to, to make it um, feel like you're going into the shadow area. Sometimes I can even then maybe take a tiny little bit, just barely any of this black. Might not have gotten any on there. Yeah, I wanna get some on there, but I don't wanna get too much. And I can add that black to it to make my darkest color a real shadowy orange. It's still kind of an orange, but it has a variety in there and that's so, so important. So that's one aspect of why the color wheel is really important. We'll talk about more here in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna really quick fill in the rest of my complementary colors. So between red and blue, everyone should know this, is gonna go purple. My purple is pretty dark. I might end up having to lighten that up a little bit that I have. Um, and then between my blue and my yellow is going to go green. So I will speed this up and we'll get it all filled in. If you want to pause it and fill it in, that'd be awesome. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got this whole thing filled out. I'm just going to move this over here a little bit and grab a, another piece of paper. Um, because I wanted to talk for a, just a moment more about the color wheel and why it's so, so important to learn about it. So thinking about the color wheel, we talked about the different shades of orange we could get. Um, where it really comes into play is think about if I were to try to get some purples together. So if I, a purple is made up of a red and a blue, and how much red and how much blue you put into that is really gonna make a huge difference. So here's an example. There is a purple that you definitely see is a reddish purple. If I were to take this same mixture and I add a little more blue to it, that's almost too blue, isn't it? Let's add a little more red. I'm still got a dark purple, but it is definitely leaning more towards a um, blue purple as opposed to a red purple. I'll try to get something that's a little in between here. Sometimes purples can look black, <laughs> so we don't want that. There we go. So this is more of a reddish purple, this is a bluish purple, and this is kind of as in between as I'm probably gonna get. So that makes a huge difference because um, you know, some grapes are going to lean more towards what we would consider like a red grape. A blueberry is going to lean way more towards this, but technically blueberries tend towards being kind of a purpley color, depending on where you're looking at. Um, the other one that I really um, comes into play a lot with my paintings is making a green. So a green obviously is going to be blue and yellow, but boy, how you mix those makes such a huge difference. So I'm gonna start off using barely any blue because the darker the color, the more it wants to take over for sure. And then I'll pull some green in or yellow in here. So a lot of times you're gonna get kind of, I find, especially when I'm mixing acrylic paints, get kind of this pukey color of green, but it'll still show us what we wanna see. So in this one, obviously we see that there is a lot more yellow. This is a yellowish green and that makes a huge difference. When I add a little bit more of the blue to it, I get a completely different color. There's way more blue in that. For me personally, that makes a huge difference when I'm mixing paint colors because um, I use it all the time for leaves and there are so many different varieties of leaves in nature that you need a lots of different um, greens. That's a, that's a huge need. And so I can change that up um, in a lot of different ways um, depending on how much of the primary colors I put in it to mix it. The other thing I want you to think about is when, pull my eye up here again with the color wheel, when we are looking at the color wheel, a really, really, really important thing to think about is what color is sitting opposite of the colors that you're doing. Drip a little water on there. Because um, whatever is sitting opposite of it goes well with it. So if you're not sure sometimes what to paint, or draw or color in, however you're, whatever you're using, what colors are gonna go well together, think of the color wheel and whatever goes opposite is called the complementary color. It complements it, it says something nice about it, I like to think. So for instance, the one that we're most familiar with, obviously, 
is red and green. We think of Christmas. Reds and greens are always going to look fantastic in art. And it doesn't matter. You could use a variety of different shades of reds and greens. Like I could go and use my a little bit more of um, this is we said was an orange, but there's a lot of red in that. And it's probably this one is going to go a lot better with a green than maybe that orange would because this has a little more red in it and red and green always go well together. Um, and then of course, purple and yellow are always gonna go great. Um, and blues and oranges are gonna go great. The other thing that we can think about that in that, and I use this all the time, is if I mix the complementary colors together, I'm gonna get kind of a grayed down version of the original color. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's take orange and let's take blue because they are opposite on the color wheel. And when I combine them, I end up with this kind of a, it's not a pretty color, is it? It's kind of almost a brown, right? Okay. I use this all the time in painting, you guys, because this is how I form a lot of my shadow colors. So, for instance, let's say I have a green for a leaf. Again, I use leaves all the time. And I want, this is the color of my leaf right here. Okay? Nice leaf, just plain green. I'm just, I know it's not a, um, primary color, but I'm just getting a, a, a solid green. And I want to make this shadowy. A lot of times people, let me draw another one here. A lot of times people will think, well, in order to get the shadow, I have to take and add my black. Well, you could, but a lot of times that's too dark, too, too heavy. So I would rather have a little more of a subtle shadow color. So to get it, I'm gonna add my green and add a little bit of red to it, which is its complementary color, meaning they go well together side by side, but they also, this will provide a really good shadow color. Now it looks weird sitting right here, but if I were to draw, I'll tell you what, I'll just do it. Let's say I were to draw, I got a little too much red on there still. Gotta clean my brush. Let's say I'm gonna draw a leaf, okay? And for time's sake, I'm not gonna draw any highlights or anything, but let's say I wanted this to be my shadow side. I could take and add a little bit of red to my green. And do you see how that makes just a really beautiful shadow? Because it's, it's a complementary color and complementary colors mixed together gray down the other color and it makes for great shadows. So these are just some little ideas to tell you how important the color wheel is. It's super duper important and there's lots to learn from it and we're only just barely hitting the, the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg on it, but it's good foundational stuff for you to think about. So let's continue. Okay, so well. let's turn our attention now back to the actual eye. We'll set aside all the stuff for the color wheel. We'll come back to that later. So around here, our, um, we've got our iris, but now we need to actually paint in the actual eyeball. And a lot of times people wanna just paint this plain old white, but here's my suggestion to you. It's almost never exactly white. So go ahead and grab some white and grab a good amount of it and then barely just a little bit of black. Not hardly anything, it'll turn it gray so quickly, but technically the whites of our eyes tend to be more towards a gray and really they tend to be more towards a blue gray. So I'm gonna add just a smidge of blue also. I don't know if you can even really see that on the canvas or on the um, camera. Darken it up just a little bit, a little bit more blue. Well, that might've been too much, okay. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna take, if you are using uh, watercolor, you can still do the same thing. If you are using um, crayons or markers, um, you probably want to just put it on very lightly, a gray. Um, crayons would work better for this part than probably markers would. Markers are gonna be hard to blend. But notice how it looks pretty gray right here. And every time I do this, I'm always like, oops, I colored my color wheel. Every time I do this, I'm always like, oh my goodness, it's too gray. But trust me, this is gonna work out great, okay? So I'm gonna come around here. We said that's just gonna sit down there a little bit lower. And I'm gonna go all the way down 
into my tear duct. Okay. Now, we're going to leave that and we're going to let that dry. And we'll go over a little bit of white and get a little white spot on it later. But what I want you to think about now is because this is an actual eyelid sitting on top, there's going to be a slight shadow. I started to naturally just get a shadow in there anyway. But there's going to be a shadow where the to show the roundness of the eyeball, it needs to get a little darker in here under the whole lid and in each little corner. So I'm going to take my original. This is my eye. Um, ball color and I'm just going to pull in a little more black and a little bit more blue. I don't want to go too dark. Oops, I don't think I got any blue. Okay, and I'm just going to come under the eyelid here. There we go. I switch my brush. I got a long brush there that's causing me issues. Okay, so I'm just going to come under this eyelid. I'm not going to worry about going across the um, iris yet. And I don't want it to form a line, so I just kind of pat it a little bit and pull it so that it's a little bit darker or a little bit faded. But I want it definitely darker right underneath that eyelid. And then in the corner by the tear duct, it also gets darker. So once I put that on there, I'm going to wipe my brush off right away. And I'm just gonna pull a little of that paint before it dries. I'm gonna pull it out without anything on my brush to soften that up a little bit. But do you see that beautiful shadow that's starting? I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna grab a little of my color. Just pull a straight line under here. It would also kind of, right there, kind of come out. And there will be a tiny little shadow right here. I don't want that paint to dry before I pull it. So I'm gonna clean off my brush really quick, dry it, and then just with nothing on my brush, just kind of wiggle that back and forth. Oh, guess what? Might have already started drying. I'm gonna have to get it a little wet. There we go. Enough moisture on there to kind of wet that eye again, that dark paint. Okay, so now it looks really weird because it's, it's such a, we can see the shadow and that makes sense to us, but this is still not making super good sense. That's okay. What I want you to do now is I want you just with a clean brush to get into a little bit of white paint. I mean, I don't mean like that. I mean like, eh, wipe it on the side of your palette pretty good. And then following the roundness of the eye, I want you just to kind of pull it down until it lightens it up ever so slightly. Try to stay out of that shadowy area though. Oops, I might be getting too white here. You don't want it too white. Again, when when our eyes see the eyeball, it really does not see white, okay? It sees more of a gray. And I feel like I got a little bit of a little bit of my shadow here and I didn't really do much here. So right where that lid is meeting that little, sh or not the lid, the um, eyeball is meeting the shelf, there would be a little bit of a lower shadow here also as it goes into that lower eye lid. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty well from the camera angle. There we go. And you can go back in there and kind of darken it up as much as you would like it to be darkened. And I like to just let this one kind of fade out. I don't want a really harsh line. I do feel like right here it needs to be a little bit darker. Oh, it might be too dark. There we go. Okay, I like that. Okay, so let's get some um, skin color around here. We're not gonna try to paint a whole ton, but important things about making an eye is that shadow really makes a difference there. So we want that shadow. Actually, before we do the skin tone, the shadow is gonna go all the way across. So let's go ahead. I had to wait on across this part because I wanted to make sure it was dry. But let's go ahead and make sure we have enough blue, enough of the little bit of black to make a little shadow. And this is where the eyelashes really start to form and stick out a little bit more. So just get a nice shadow going across the whole top. And notice I'm not using a ton of paint on here and it's helping it be see-through so that I can still see the yellow and the orange that I'm painting over. Green kind of fades out because that's a darker color, but 
you definitely want to be able to see the color of your eye under there. So don't put the paint on so thick or color it in with a marker so thick that you can't see it. Okay, so there is the basics of the eye. I'm gonna go ahead and um, take your black and just color in your pupil. And again, just reminding you guys that because we're doing the color wheel, um, we are choosing to put the pupil smack dab in the middle and we're not making it super big. But a lot of times when you're drawing an actual eye, you're really not, you're only gonna see a portion of that pupil because it sits a little higher and part of it a lot of times gets covered up with the eyelid. But for what we're doing today, this is how we're gonna draw it or paint it. Okay, so let's do some skin color. So for skin color, you guys, um, I can make a lot of skin color, it depends on the color of the person, obviously, but a lot of skin color is just a mixture of orange, which I can use this if I wanted to, but it's getting kind of a little dry. A little bit of red, a little more in there. A little bit of yellow, so you know those colors are already making an orange. And then when I get a little pile there together, I'm gonna grab just a smidge of brown just to help it out there is definitely brown in there and then I'm gonna grab my white and when I add the white I start to see a tan color so for the skin you want several different colors of white so this is pretty light I'm gonna add a little more brown right here oops I'm gonna no that is brown okay get a little more red in there so what I want is I want a dark color like a dark tan or dark brown. So I'm going to keep pulling that in there until I get kind of the color I want. I might add a little white to it. I don't want to add too much because I want it to be darker. So I'm going to want a dark. I'm going to want a middle. And then I'm going to want something else that is much lighter. So it's going to have a lot more white in it. So we'll make this our light color. Hmm. Actually, we're gonna make that our light color. This is a nice middle color, so I'm gonna need more of it. Add a little bit more here. It doesn't matter which one's which, you just need a light, a dark, and a middle. Something in the middle, add a little more. So I keep looking, I'm looking at this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. This is definitely darker, but it's not probably as dark as that, which I might add a little more brown to. There we go. So I need three piles. I need something that is dark, middle, and light. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the dark because that's what's on my brush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and come in here and I'm gonna color in my crease. This is where the eyeball ends. And it makes a darker color because there's a shadow on there. Now I don't want this to dry, so I'm right away gonna wash off my brush, get into my middle color. And the middle color, I'm gonna go right up against there. I'm gonna add a little more white to that. It's almost close to the color of the crease. So my middle color is gonna be on the sides of the eyeball. I'm gonna leave this part blank for now. So I'm, gonna really, I'm trying to quickly paint it in before it dries, and I might be putting a little too much paint on as a result. Don't feel like you have to go thick. Probably thinner paint is better. Okay, and then I also want this on this side. So I'm keeping this pretty simple. Doing this in acrylic, the colors are gonna be pretty bold. And I can kinda, I'm gonna just let this fade. I don't wanna draw the whole eye in there, so I'm just gonna kinda let that come down and fade okay and now I have this middle section I'm going to take my lighter color which I think this still needs to be lighter I usually have to play with the colors a little bit the important thing is it doesn't really matter how light or how dark you go ultimately you just want to make sure you have those three versions a light a dark and a middle and I'm going to pull that light into my middle a little bit so that it blends it and it's soft and you kind of can't tell where one ends and the other one begins. Do 
Do you see how all of a sudden that takes on a roundness of its own? Now I can come back in with a little bit more white and really get this. I'm, my paintbrush has still got the light color on it, but when I add a little white, it has even a little bit more. Okay, so far we're just gonna leave that like that. I'm gonna kind of let this fan out a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna take care of what's, I can see the middle, I can see the light, and I can see that crease. But where that crease is, we need to blend that just a little bit. So go back and grab your crease color, the dark color. Go over it again, the same line. I just don't want that to be such a harsh line. So now that it's wet again, I'm gonna grab my middle color. So it's not dark, it's not light. And notice all of a sudden I'm changing the brush strokes. I'm kind of, instead of going side to side, I'm kind of making them flare out from the, hoping that my hand isn't covering this up on the camera, but I'm letting it kind of come up from the dark color and pulling that mid color up. Because that's kind of what the eye does. You know, the, the skin starts to kind of get this little bulge in it as it's going up onto the brow bone. And we're just gonna leave all this over here today. And now that I have that in there and it's kind of feathered out, go ahead and grab my, my lighter color. And I don't wanna bring that all the way to the crease. I wanna bring it up right where the middle color is kind of ending and blend it in with that. So if this is, if you are in upper elementary and this is a little bit above what you feel comfortable doing, don't worry about it. Just do what you can with what you have. You can leave the skin completely uncovered if you want and just concentrate on the eye. But sometimes it's kind of nice to see what other people do so that you can kind of get the idea of it. So this is kind of looking like feathers and I don't want that. So I'm gonna kind of try to blend that in a little bit. And I'm gonna let it just kind of fade out on the side, okay? So I'm gonna go back in here. I feel like this needs to be a little bit lighter. I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to that. Should be still a little bit wet. And pull it down and blend it a little bit. Now right now, it looks and feels like their eyes are bulging <laughs> because we're not seeing any eyelashes. So when we get the eyelashes in, that'll, that's gonna make a lot more sense. And I just wanna, I still see a little bit of a line there, so I'm gonna try to get rid of that line ever so slightly. There we go. Okay, now let's take care of the bottom eyelashes, or by, bottom eyelid. Same kind of principle, but let's not use the dark. Let's just use the middle color, which I'm running out of, so I'm gonna have to really quick grab some more. And we're gonna go just, we're, we're not gonna go down very far. We're just gonna go a little bit right in here. Remember, we've got that little ridge. Don't, don't do anything with the ridge yet. So now you can kind of probably see it a little better. Gonna get a little right there of our middle color. And I'm just gonna do this side alone first, okay? And I've kind of brought it around and now I'm gonna kind of flatten it out this way. And then right in here, I might grab a little bit of my darker because this is where your eyes would kind of pinch down a little bit, not a ton. You don't want it to be like obvious, obvious, but it'll pinch down a little bit. And so we'll kind of mix that in there, okay? And then we're gonna get that same middle, we'll go back to our middle color and get our middle color coming around here, but not very far, okay? So we'll stop there pretty quickly. Dripping water everywhere. And I'm gonna go around my tear duct too a little bit. Okay, and just kind of let it fade out there. And now grab your light color and start pulling your light color. Mix up more paint. Gotta make sure you mix up enough paint. I was not very good about that. Pull your light color this way because just like this bulged out here, this is gonna bulge out a little bit there also. Okay, and then everybody has this little section right here. I'm just gonna put water on there so you can see, that tends to be a little darker. It's where the bone just kinda moves away and the eyeball is parting, and so that's gonna have a little bit of a, some people are more shadowy in there than others, but I'm using my darkest color just to kinda get a little bit of a shadow in there. 
and I'm not going to do much with it. And I'm also going to use that dark color to color in my eye duct. And we'll come back and do a little bit more with that eye duct here in a minute, but let's let it dry. And then finally, grab your lightest color because right up here, there's usually a little bit of a spot around the eye duct, but it tends to lighten up a little bit. So we'll lighten that. And we're not gonna do too much more than with it than that. That's, a, that's about all we're gonna do. Um, I'm liking what it's doing so far. So let's take a break from a moment for a moment from the skin and all that, and let's go back to our color wheel. It should be dry by now if you used paint, and we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna color it in, um, not color it in, but outline it with a simple black marker to make the colors pop. So I'll speed it up and show you that. Okay, those colors are starting to pop there. It looks really good. I'm really liking that. So now I think we'll return to our eye, the actual um, forming of the eye again. We have some things that we need to take care of. For instance, um, we did not do anything with this little ridge right here. And on mine, this is looking very similar in color and I want this to darken up. So I'm gonna really quick grab my middle color which by the way, you might be able to see here, I'm gonna have to remix them because I'm running out, which is always tricky because good luck to me in getting the exact color, but I'll do my best. <laughs> so I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna, because the, um, oh, that's awfully orange. See, I told you I'd have a hard time. Um, because that kind of rounds out the other side there, I wanna make sure that this is getting a little bit darker on this end. So let me, I'm gonna clean off my brush right away. And while it's still dry, or still wet, the paint, I'll come in here and just kind of soften it. And because I mixed a little bit more of that color and it's not quite the same, I'm gonna darken this up a little bit, just so that they're very similar. There we go, I'll let that fade out. Okay, so we got that a little bit darker, but then there's going to be a little bit of a shadow, just like there was a shadow up here, which we're gonna make darker in a minute. There's gonna be a little bit of a shadow of those tiny little eyelashes right down there. So we don't necessarily have to do like the black and the blue. What I would suggest is you use the darkest color that you had and add just a little bit of black to it to get a little bit of a shadow right here. Add a little more black to that. It's just right here, I'm gonna add on this side a little bit of a shadow, right under that ridge. And because I don't want that to look really harsh, that's pretty hard, I'm gonna wipe off my paintbrush right away and come in with just nothing on my paintbrush and let it kind of fade out a little bit. See how that softens that up a little bit? There's nothing on my brush right now and it's just helping it to soften it. And I'll even bring it around here because your eyelashes on that bottom part will kind of come up through that whole thing. So pull this down a little bit. And then right at the top here, right where that ridge hits, there will be a little bit of a lighter color. It's, it's still a flesh color. I'm gonna use my lightest color. And just, oops, that's too dark. Always add just a little bit more white to it. Oh, I still feel like that's too dark. There we go. And you can see that it naturally makes a little bit of um, a lighter color right at the edge there, and that's okay. That's a great thing, actually. So I'm gonna bring it around, and the way that the angle hits, this should start to fade. So right about here, it's darkening up again because I'm seeing a different angle of that. And it's kind of fading into that dark gray line, which by the way, now that we see how it's dry, I don't know how yours looks, but I'm gonna need to get some more on mine and darken up those shadows a little bit. 
So I'm gonna come in here to the top again. I just feel like this shadow needs to be darker all the way across. And in this corner, it's a little bit more narrow and it starts to widen as it goes around. We see a little bit more of it and then it gets narrow again. So I'm gonna again, clean off my brush and just with a clean brush, just gonna kind of go back and forth to soften those shadows all the way down. And we even can get a little shadow in here by the tear duct. And then I'm gonna grab some more shadow and we said right here at the edge of the tear duct, there's like a strong shadow right there. Not that strong though. I'm gonna clean off my brush and soften it. I don't like how it went out so far, so that's fine with a clean brush. I'm just gonna kind of push it back in. And that's more what I want. Looking good. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. This is a very thin shadow because you're seeing it from more the top angle. But then it kind of thickens up a little bit here. Not as much as it does over there though. Soften it a little bit. I'm liking that a lot, okay. And then, looks like I just missed a spot completely over here. We're gonna kind of clean that up a little bit. Okay, and then we want to start thinking about the eyelashes themselves. So eyelashes can be tricky because they tend to get overdone pretty easily. Um, you can do them one of two ways. You could go ahead and take your marker and do it with a marker, which I'm probably going to do just to show you what I'm kind of thinking, although I don't want that to be wet. Um, you can do it with a marker. You can do it with a paintbrush, but the whole idea and the important part of it is what angle you're doing it at. So I'm just gonna show you a real simplified version here on my scratch paper. Move that out of the way. So a lot of times when people are, you know, doing your eyes, there's our eye, okay. Um, and a lot of times they wanna do eyelashes that are kinda of like this, but your eyelashes never sit that way. Um, your eyelashes, when you're looking straight on, there's our eyelid, um, they tend to go sideways and swoop. Now, I'm making them extra long. Don't make them that long, please. Um, and then they are very thick right here. And then that's about all you see. You don't really see, like you're not going to see eyelashes going all the way around. And that's how you end up, um, especially kids, how they end up having more like a cartoon feel. So a lot of times when I do an eye, I think actually will do it with paint because I want to show you what I do. A lot of times when I'm doing an eye, um, eyelashes, I'll take a flat brush and get a little wet here. And then I'll take my, I try not to use straight black. I try to at least mix it with a little bit of um, like the white and the brown really mix as well to make what you want. It's just a little too harsh if it's black. And I'm gonna start somewhere in the middle here. And a lot of times I'm just gonna kinda first line it almost right above where I made that shadow. A little bit more here. And at first, I'm not even drawing eyelashes at all. But I don't want this to dry, so I'm gonna do them pretty quick here. Then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna swoop them from the middle, just kinda of swoop and get a couple. Okay, now those to me are pretty like, whoa, in your face kind of thing. So I'm gonna clean my brush off before it dries. Make sure it's still nice and flat. And come in and just kind of soften that up a little bit. Because a lot of times when I'm painting like in oils, I don't, you don't really, I don't often show the actual eyelashes themselves. It'll almost look like kind of just a thick line, which is what I'm trying to kind of reiterate here. So you do want to make sure it comes all the way down like this though. That's an important part because they will kind of lay to the side there. And then just add a little water and maybe just kind of add some shadowy kind of, and that's, that's about it. I'm not going to do too much more than those because otherwise it starts really getting to be too much. 
definitely there. If I start adding it too thick, it's, I just want to get a little bit more of a shadow over there is why I'm kind of coming back over there. So the further down the side you go, the more you're gonna see that shadow. Up here, you're not gonna see it so much. But don't try to, you know, girls don't try to draw like giant, you know, eyelashes like that where they get look like they're wearing mascara. It just is never gonna look normal or right when you do it. Okay, and then down below, um, I just really, either I take this and just kind of draw some little shadowy marks down there and then go back in on the side of my brush and kind of um, define them a little bit more. Getting down there too far. But I don't wanna to go too much further over there than that. So when I'm looking at this, you guys, it still feels like the eye's bulging and that tells me that I need to bring that shadowy kind of feel I might need to start my eyelashes just a little bit further and bring my shadow itself down. So this is the shadow underneath that's kind of see-through because what that's doing is it's making it feel like the eyelashes are, are swooping down a little bit more. They're coming up and out like this. So many times when you're painting or doing a project, you have to make some adjustments like that. That's okay. Never be afraid of that. I would say about 80% of creating any kind of artwork is problem solving. Okay, I find myself in this position. This isn't looking right. What do I need to do to help to fix it? Okay, I feel like her, his or her eye just closed down a little bit more of that. That really helped. Okay, so again, um, if I had, I don't have a fine point um, brush on me, but if I did, I probably would come back in and maybe just add a few little sparse ones. I don't wanna go too much. That's about it for that. So then the final thing that we wanna do on our eye is we wanna get some reflection in there. So we already said that we, we decided to make the eyeball itself kind of gray. We lightened it up ever so slightly, but an eyeball is not a solid mass. I mean, it is, but there's some translucency to the material that it's made of. So go ahead and grab some white and just kind of pull it, you know, make sure you can actually see it, pull it around at the angle of the actual eye, it is, eye shape that it is and get a little bit of extra white on either side. Well, maybe too much. And you can even get a nice little line in there going. A line as in a hot, what we would refer to as like a hot spot where it's really extra bright. Now here, you wanna make sure that it blends in. So you might have to soften it up a little bit. And then um, you also are gonna wanna have some kind of a reflection on your um, eye itself on the iris part. Now, if this was normal colored in the middle, we would do a whole bunch of other things with it. We would show light coming through it a little bit differently, but because we're just sticking with kind of the whole idea of drawing in the color wheel, we're gonna leave it as is, and we're just gonna put a little bit of a reflection in the pupil. So on the reflection, I like to have at least a couple little spots because there is often more than one spot on there to show that light has come through. So. Um, don't be afraid to add a nice little bold white spot in there. And there we have it. We have a basic eye. Um, so I tried to teach you some techniques that would teach you how to make an eye itself. I'm darken that up a little bit, bring that eye up. Um, I tried to also teach you a little bit about the color wheel because I think that's a really, really, really important thing that we need to understand and learn about it helps us in so many areas when we are making art. So I hope that you found this fun and I hope that you found um, it interesting and I hope you learned some things. And I would love to see your eyes. Send me a picture of it. Um, you can send it to my, you can either message me here on um, YouTube or you can send it to my Facebook page which is Artwork by Julia Coolish. And feel free to just go ahead and snap a picture and send it right to me in the comments. So thanks, guys. Hope you have a great day.